Hey, in this video, uh, we're going to be introducing branching processes. Um, kind of just going to give an overview of what branching processes are, give some simple examples, uh, and then in some further videos, we're going to dive much deeper into um, kind of the math behind branching processes, uh, different cool results, different cool properties of them. Uh, but for now, we're just going to understand what a branching process is, formalize it with some math, and then in a series of videos, we're going to uh, dive deeper. So, like with all stochastic processes, we're going to start by uh, just defining a branching process x sub t. Um, remember this sub t, the, the t index reminds us that we are doing something through time. A stochastic process is some random variable that evolves through time. Um, and we're going to, in this case, we're going to define x as We're going to define x sub t as the number of cells at time t. And I'm just using cells because cells kind of subdivide and, you know, do that a bunch. You can also, you know, people, you know, amoebas, you could say, I don't know, like a, a bug population. It's, it's something, some population that branches or divides, but I'm just going to say cells because it's, it's easy to, to kind of use that. You can, you know, use any noun you really want. Um, so x sub t is the number of cells at, at time t. Okay, and as we're going to see... Um, we start with a certain number, and some we're going to repopulate, some are not going to repopulate, and we're going to sort of think about um, how that, that plays out over time. Um, these x sub t, the important uh, kind of a feature about them is that they have an offspring distribution. Um, so an offspring... I'm going to just uh, um, shorten distributions that... Offspring distribution, and the offspring distribution is p sub zero, p sub one, p sub two, dot 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 all the way. And basically, this is just a vector of probabilities uh, where p sub k equals probability So p sub k is the probability that you have k offspring. So p sub 0 is the probability that you have no offspring. p sub 1, you have one offspring. p sub 2, you divide to two offsprings. Um, and because by the laws of probability, um, all of these probabilities, right, if we start at 0 and, and add all the way to infinity, they must sum to 1. Right, because um, like the, this cell that we have at time t, it can either go to zero or one or two, you know. But all the probabilities that you know, it, it, it can't sum to less than one. It has to, it has to sum to one, um, which kind of uh, kind of makes sense. And the uh, well, well, we'll define that. In, we'll define that in a second. Um, the other kind of important thing is that um, so t. So, I'm just going to write it like this. Basically, what I was kind of thinking about is that, it, like, it, so all the cells that come out of this population throughout time have this same offspring, distribu offspring distribution, each of them the same distribution, and they're independent. So this IID stands for independent and identically distributed. So they have the same distribution. It's not like one cell is more likely to create two kids and another cell is more likely to create zero kids, all of the same distribution, and they're all independent. The knowing one cell doesn't change another cell in the same population, in the same generation. Like if you know one cell divides into three cells, then it doesn't change the probability that the three children cells, you know. So independent, identically distributed would get very complicated if those were not independent and identically distributed. So that's something that we assume. Um, so that's kind of our setup, and this is all pretty... Uh, abstracts. So we're going to actually think of some um, kind of simple examples. So let's define our first uh, branching process, a very simple one, p sub 0 equals 1. Okay, so p sub 0 equals 1. Remember, p sub 0 means the probability of no offspring. In this case, we just set it to 1. And this is a very sad and boring example, right? Like, we just have our cell at time t equals 1. And it has no offspring, probability one, so the population dies out right away. That's a very simple 
and not exciting branching process. A bit more exciting um, is p sub 0 equals 1 over 100, and p sub 1 equals 99 over 100. Okay, so, you know, these, these sum to 1, right? It's either we have no offspring or we have one offspring. And the way this works, you can see there's a pretty high probability of having one offspring. So let's say we start at t equals 1. We have one offspring. Say we, t, you know, t equals 2. We have another offspring. And we're going to keep going like that for a while, probably, because we have a pretty high probability of having at least one offspring. But eventually, right, eventually this is going to die out. Eventually we're going to hit that 1 in 100 chance. Going to be zero offspring, and this process will die out. So this is also a pretty boring process. There's no real branches here, um, but we're just kind of getting a sense of what's going on. Um, the most interesting example so far, we're going to uh, give another simple setup. P sub zero equals one fourth. P sub one equals one half. P sub two equals one fourth. So in this case, either you have zero kids, probably one-fourth, one kid with probably one-half, uh, two kids with probably one-fourth. I should also clarify, I'm saying kids. Th these are cells that subdivide, or, you know, it doesn't take two cells to make, right, it's just one cell, it either, you know, it either kind of regenerates, you know, one cell or two cells, or divides into two cells. So we're basically just considering a, a single cell. Um, so in this case, right, we say we start at time t equals one, Say the first cell only has one kid, that's the highest prob you know, highest probability one half. And then say that time t equals two. Let's say it has two kids, so our first branch. Um, let's say that this, so now we're in the third generation, and this is our first example. Um, so you know, at this basically in this case, x sub one is one, because there's one cell in that generation at time t. Uh, x sub two is also one, there's one cell in that generation at time two x sub 3 is 2, because there are two cells in that generation of time 3. Um, let's say that this cell has 0 kids, so it dies out. And then say that this cell has 1 uh, offspring, that's t equals 4. Um, so x sub 4 is 1. And then let's say that this cell dies out. It doesn't have offspring. t equals 5. Um, and then we're done. The, you know, there's nothing else, because there's, there's no more cells. So uh, this kind of raises an interesting point, and we saw it in the, the past two examples, but all of these processes, in this case that we drew them, they all went extinct, right? There's no more cells, and when there's no more cells, they can't repopulate to other cells, so, you know, the process is over. And we use something called P sub E as, uh, we call that the extinction probability. And simply put, as you can probably guess, that's the probability that a branching process is going to go extinct. P sub E in this case is pretty simple. It's it's one, right? This is going to go extinct after one time because there's a hundred percent chance that you are going to have zero offspring. Uh, P sub E in this case is also one, right? Like you're going to have you're going to have one kid most of the time, but as soon as you hit zero, you're probably going to hit zero within you know certainly or it's, it's anything could happen, but you're probably going to hit zero within. 100 tries, 100 generations, and then you're done forever. Um, and, you know, obviously, the populations kind of extend, you know, we're thinking at, at infinite time, right? So eventually, you're definitely going to get to zero. Um, this case, right, population three, or just got, yeah, differentiate process three, we did go to zero in this case that we drew, but you can kind of envision a case where, you know, we branch, and then we branch, and we branch, and we branch, and, we branch, and the thing just gets huge, right? And um, that's kind of the case where it just like population gets so big and it's expanding so fast that you know it, it, it kind of diverges as we go to infinity and, and the process is not going to go to zero. Um, and the extinction probability actually it takes a lot of heavy heavier duty math to kind of work through. That's the topic of a future video, so we're just kind of introducing it here. Um, it's it's easy to solve in these like simple cases, but in a bit more complicated case like this, it's harder to solve. But uh, as a kind of exercise to yourself. Um, you try to guess uh, if this population will go extinct. So take a second, and I'll, I'll tell you the answer. Take a second, pause the video, think about this. Do you think this process will go extinct?
sorry, do you think this process will go extinct with probability one? It of course can go extinct, but do you think it'll go, it'll certainly go extinct or are there scenarios where it will, you know, expand forever? So the answer is yes, this probably, this branching process, this population will certainly go extinct. And the topic of that is for another video. So uh, check out our next videos on this, on this topic as we get deeper into uh, the discussion, um, the chapter which I'm referencing will be linked in the description below, and we'll see you next time.